a neuroscientist by the name of Dr. Eben Alexander says that he uh, somehow got a bacterial meningitis that completely inactivated the neocortex of his brain. Now the neocortex is responsible for emotion and uh, because of the uh, meningitis that he had, he just went into a coma and he mm. was in coma for about seven days. And what's really interesting is that he says that he experienced the afterlife uh, when he went through this near-death experience. In fact, let's watch a video where he explains this in greater detail. I had no body awareness. I had no arms, legs, or anything, but I was aware that I was a speck on a butterfly wing. Absolutely beautiful butterfly. And there were millions of other colorful butterflies looping and swirling all around us, all in this beautiful formation of flying. And then we left this universe. I was there with that beautiful, warm awareness of the divine, which was clearly what, what we would call God. All right, that's trippy. Now look, a lot of people are gonna like uh, hearing that and they ain't gonna buy into it. And you know, normally I'd make fun, you know, because I don't believe in religion, etc. And the speck on a butterfly seems pretty trippy, right? Uh, but you know, look, uh, that's the experience that he had. Some will obviously interpret it like that's it. I can't wait to be a speck on a butterfly and meet the divine when I pass away. But the thing is, he wasn't dead, right? So my, I think, far more logical interpretation is that he had some degree of consciousness. And it was based on you know what parts of his brain were working and not working at the time, mm -hmm. and when he was in a coma, and that's why things might have appeared dark in the beginning, and then they lightened up later. And obviously, at some point, he got full function of his brain back. That would appear to be the far more rational explanation. Right. I mean, he says that the MRI scans indicated that his neocortex was completely inactive. So I think that's what makes this story so interesting because you would need it to be active or you're assuming that you would need it to be active in order to experience all of these things while you're in a coma, right? But I feel like it's probably much more complex than that, right? Uh, do neuroscientists, scientists in general, know everything they need to know about the human brain? I'm, I'm sure that there could be more to discover. I, I don't know, and maybe his experience was different. Maybe, that there's, maybe there's something that could be learned from that, as opposed to just saying, oh, I experienced the afterlife. There's more to the universe than we think. Let's move on. Yeah, no, I hear you on that. And I don't want to dismiss it because, look, right. I, yeah, I don't think he's lying. You no, know, of I, course. I'm right? not saying that at so, all. And if that's his experience, that's an experience that should be delved into. I mean, it's obviously something that's not very easy to replicate because your cortex would have to stop functioning. That's not a good idea. So, and, of course, keep this in mind. It's also, I think, very possible that it happened in a period of time that he's getting confused. Like, he might think that it lasted over seven days, you know, while his brain was technically not functioning, maybe it happened in seven minutes before he woke up. That's exactly, yeah. So I feel like there might be a scientific explanation to this, and I'm interested to hear what, what it is. Well, there's a partial scientific explanation. Um, there are various psychotropic drugs that induce these kind of experiences. Um, I forget the name of those drugs. Uh, one is, I think one is like DMT. The other one has a longer name. Uh, and, the, and they're taken in different ways. And it really mimics a very similar result where you see patterns and colors and um, you know this high can last a couple of minutes, but it seems like days and days. And a lot of the Native American tribes used to, used to indulge in these uh, rituals where they would use these psychotropic drugs. And apparently um, when you die, um, the same psychotropic drug called DMT is released in the back of your brain. So, so there's definitely some sort of um, chemical reaction that's happening inside your head that makes you visualize or experience these things. Um, I, I mean, for me, it, this is not anything remotely um, resembling evidence for an afterlife. I think it's just a, a brain function that went awry during that state. Right, and you know, at LSD, you're tripping. That doesn't mean you accidentally stumbled into heaven while you were on LSD. I know, but the thing that makes this story so strange is he's a neuroscientist, right? So he understands the human brain better than anyone else in this room. And he knows what the doctors did to him or what his brain was going through during this process. Right, but so if you feel that and you go through it, it might color the way you look at it, mm -hmm. right? And you might slip away from the, the logical world because you feel like, wait, I experienced it and it felt so real. Right. So that might, and if you're doing an experiment, you certainly wouldn't want to be in the experiment. So in a sense, 
he doesn't have the proper scientific uh, perspective on it because he's the one who lived it. Uh, this afterlife part of this is completely preposterous. I can't believe we're even talking about it seriously. The first part with the dream on the butterfly, that's fanciful dreaming, maybe caused by the release of those chemicals Steve's talking about. That, that all makes sense. But that he went to the afterlife, that's preposterous. Then you forget in the layer, he comes back to reality, to consciousness, and then has to express what he experienced in words. Our words that he spent his whole life learning are limited to his experience on Earth. So he had some weird experience in this near-death moment, and the only word he could come up with it is afterlife or heaven or the f next to God. But just because he used those words doesn't mean that any of that stuff is real. Or it could be that you guys are a little bitter because you didn't go to heaven and he did. Yeah, that's what I thought.